Hello and welcome to part one of a series that I just decided to start called I Tried to Tell You. This is because of the state of the world where it's at now and the fact that I've tried warning people 20 years ago when I first started looking into um, the underhandedness of the highest levels of government. I worked at a help desk in 1998 in Michigan and I was walking behind a friend's computer, a co-worker's computer and he was reading an article on the screen and I said what what are you reading? And he says oh it's called gun control in the new world order don't you know about that? I said no can you send me the article? and so he forwarded it to me and I started reading it and it was all about uh, the Bill Clinton gun buyback program and how they're planning on uh, slowly manipulating the masses to turn in their guns in order so that they will not be able to defend themselves in the coming years once they've put the uh, process of the New World Order, the building of the New World Order in place. They recommended I get a book called Behold a Pale Horse. So I went to a nearby mall that sold all kinds of conspiracy books and picked up a copy of Bill Cooper's Behold a Pale Horse. Right in the front cover, there's something very interest, but interesting by someone named Delamer Duveris. One basic truth can be used as a foundation for a mountain of lies and if we dig down deep enough in the mountain of lies and bring out that truth to set it on top of the mountain of lies, the entire mountain of lies will crumble under the weight of that one truth and there is nothing more devastating to a structure of lies than the revelation of the truth upon which the structure of lies was built because the shock waves of the revelation of the truth reverberate and continue to reverberate throughout the earth for generations following awakening even those people who had no desire to be awakened to the truth. And this series of this part of the series that I tried to tell you is going to be all based on uh, high-tech surveillance, government spying on you. There's a bunch of articles from back when I first started learning about all this that I ended up printing out, and they've been sitting in a drawer. I decided it was time to start bringing them out. Now, this very first one I'm going to... There's so many... Actually, there's so many articles here that I'm just going to show you the titles and read a little bit about it but it's going to be up to you to do the research on it because there's just way too much to go through and I don't want this video to be way too long. Uh, this first one's from the Windsor Star. Biometric wizardry to destroy anonymity. Face recognition technology identifies Canadian. When it comes to surveillance, we're not alone. Windsor's use of video cameras to monitor the downtown follows the lead of London, where 16 cameras mounted on traffic poles keep a 24-hour watch on downtown streets for the city's police. In New York City, more than 2,400 cameras, many operated by private companies, gaze out over the streets of Manhattan alone. No matter what walking through the world these days, you're going to end up on video camera. And they say, you know what? I have nothing to hide. I have nothing to hide. I'm not a lawbreaker. But look at the world now. I try to tell people, eventually what's going to happen is what you think and you know that as being legal and lawful and good is going to become illegal and unlawful and bad. We're now in a world where everything that was once good, well, majority of everything that was once good is now deemed as bad. And it's all been done by manipulation. 
This started a very long time ago, before the 1700s. They knew, the people who started it, knew that this was going to be a long-range plan. It would never come to fruition in their lifetime, but they set the wheels in motion so that all of us would be under mass surveillance and all of us would be controlled. All the information is controlled. All the media outlets are run by at least six major corporations. Six. That's why you need to turn to alternative media outlets like pressfortruth.ca or wearechange.org and many more that are out there now, they're coming forward. <clears throat> it's very important. Um, this is another one from the Windsor Star. Uh, chip implants. Talking about how the, um, the technology is likely to cost a strong appeal to companies with high labor costs for small increases in staff productivity and can be the big impact on profits is also relatively cheap. I'm talking about basically chip implants uh, for companies to monitor your comings and goings as you're an employee. So I'm just going to go through these articles now. Um, Exposing the Global Surveillance System by Nikki Hager. In the late 1980s, in a decision it probably regrets the U.S. prompted New Zealand to join a new and highly secret global intelligence system. Hader's investigation into it and his discovery of the Echelon Dictionary has revealed one of the world's biggest, most closely held intelligence projects. The system allows spy agencies to monitor most of the world's telephone, email, and telex communications. For 40 years, New Zealand's largest intelligence agency, the Government Communication Security Bureau, the nation's equivalent of the U.S. National Security Agency, had been helping its Western allies spy on countries throughout the Pacific region without the knowledge of the New Zealand public or many of its highest elevated elected officials. What the NSA did not know is that by the late 1980s, various intelligence staff had decided these activities had been too secret for too long and were providing me with interviews and documents exposing New Zealand's intelligence activities. Eventually, more than 50 people who work or have worked in the intelligence and related fields agreed to be interviewed. So this is all about the Echelon system where basically all the phone calls that you have that you're making or being listened to. Now, this is a very old article, and this is, of course, very old technology. Imagine what they have now. You know what they have now. Communication through satellites, someone is listening, information control, quicker intelligence, same mission. Next one, this is uh, from a magazine that I uh, made a copy from. Are we being bugged by Big Brother? How safe are your communications for, from electronic eavesdropping? And this is an article by John Jacobs. I'll just read the headline under this uh, picture here. All over the world, Big Brother or the New World Order finds it easier each day to eavesdrop on, ext on extensive scale on tele telephones, fax, telex, voice messages, computer, email, and other forms of communications. <clears throat> okay. European Union report on the NSA in December 1997 assessing the technologies of political control from the London Daily Telegraph 16th December 1997. The European Commission report warns that the United States has developed an extensive spying network on 
the European citizens, and we should all be worried, reports Simon Davies, a global electronic spy network that can eavesdrop on every telephone, email, and telex communication around the world will officially acknowledge for the first time in a European Commission report to be delivered this week. Tyranny. Companies want biochip implants to control and monitor employee performance, just like that Windsor Star article that I was talking about. This is from May 10th, 1999. Big Brother could soon be watching from the inside. Several international companies are consulting scientists on ways of developing microchip implants for their workers to measure their timekeeping and whereabouts. The technology, which has been proven on pets and human volunteers, would enable firms to track staff all around a building or complex. The data could enable them to draw up estimates of workers' efficiency and productivity. Professor Kevin Warwick of Reading University, a leading cybernetics expert, has been approached by several firms, including a leading software company with a British subsidiary and Blackbot Inc., the American software giant. Warwick hits, hit the headlines last summer when he had a silicon chip transponder surgically implanted in his forearm. He was subsequently able to show how a computer could monitor every move he made using detectors that were scattered around the building in which he worked. This is a huge article that I uh, printed out. It's very long. And this is in, um, read this privacy paper by Patrick Poole, P-O-O-L-E, Inside America's Secret Court, the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court, New York Times. Uh, 52799 lawmakers raise questions about international spy network federal computer week 111798 eu may investigate us global spy network this is all about echelon political spying spying on everyone's phone calls uh, this is from an uh, a news group that I was on that I received emails from a long time ago called uh, uh, Newshawk. I printed out a whole bunch of emails that I got from them. Urgent, Liberty Alert, National ID. Um, even though Representative Wolf might not be your U.S. representative, please call, do not fax or email about his office, uh, and then talk about your disapproval of the national ID card. The national ID card is no longer fiction or rumor. We have until this Thursday, September 30th, and this is from 1999, to stop the national ID card. And it's an article by um, Kent Snyder. This is from September 29th, 1999. Fed ID looms. Subject, your papers please. This is from Wired.com News. Um, and this is uh, where they say, um, in past conversations I have mentioned to all of you a plan to devise a national ID card driver's license and my theories on how some portion of the government will obtain ultimate control by eliminating money and forcing people to use one card for everything, like the ration control plates used by the US military which are mandatory to make any purchases. Doesn't matter if you have the cash or not, which can simply be turned off, taxes taken out and be required to purchase food or get a job. I have also mentioned that groups like the ACLU finally got on the bandwagon a few months ago. This video is going to be a little longer than I expected, but 
It's okay. I'm just winging it here. Yeah, this is all from uh, uh, John Quinn of Newshawk. I don't know what happened to him. I tried researching his name and everything, and I can't find John Quinn anywhere. But he's where I got all of my information from a long time ago, right in the very beginning. Um, Washington Times Weekly Edition. Um, former Clinton administration official charged on July 28th that a new multi-agency plan to closely control the dissemination of public information abroad is really aimed at spinning the American public. The plan disclosed on July 28th, this is from 1999 by the Washington Times, emerged out of the concern that the U.S. public has refused to back President Clinton's foreign policy, said the former um, official who spoke on the condition he not be identified. Administration officials say news coverage is distorted at home and they need to fight it at all costs. So that's uh, just controlling all the information that's coming your way. Let's move on. Now this is from February 8th, 2000. They're watching your every move and thought. The Surveilled American, the U.S. in a Digital Terror by Howard L. Meyer, Esquire. This comes from LawSite.com. This is from February 8th, 2000. And this is a bunch of different articles within here. Another big, huge article on Echelon. This is page one of two of two from July 1st, 2000. It's, it's very thick because I have many different articles attached to it. Um, yeah, here's, uh, Echelon World Under Watch and Introduction, Thursday, uh, June 29th, 2000. Investigative journalist Duncan Campbell first brought attention to Echelon throughout, through a dispatches documentary on Channel 4. Here he introduces a major ZDNet investigation into the new automated desktop snooping. It's page 1 of 4. There's all uh, the power of the NSA. Echelon, the evidence uh, by Richard Barry, B-A-R-R-Y. Hmm. Never heard of that person before. I don't know who that is. Um, another one from Thursday, June. 29th, 2000, we are in danger of sleepwalking into a state of being permanently watched from CCTV in every high street to email intercepts at the top of the surveillance food chain is Echelon. ZDNet has been watching the watchers. So this is ZDNet.co.uk news. Same uh, date, Echelon Europe quietly strengthens surveillance. Echelon, proof of his existence. So Richard Berry has done a lot of investigating in this. It's just tons of information in here that I have on Echelon. I keep on going here. Um, cameras scan fans for criminals. Super Bowl fans had their privacy invaded by the technology critics, say. Law Officials Site Security by Robert Trigo, St. Petersburg Times, January 31st, 2000. Were you one of 100,000 fans and workers to pass through the stadium turnstiles at Sunday Super Bowl? Did you smile for the camera? Each and every face that entered Raymond James Stadium for the big game was captured by a video camera connected to a law enforcement control room inside the stadium. In milliseconds, each facial image was digitized and checked electronically against the computer files of known criminals, terrorists, and con artists 
of the Tampa Police Department, the FBI, and other state and local law enforcement agencies. Oh, this is... They were just looking for the bad guys. It's okay. Uh, this is... Uh, Thursday, May 24th, 2001. House leader assails red light cameras. Sees that a threat to privacy, safety, and government integrity. They're talking about getting this in uh, Windsor, Ontario. But I can't blame them. People just keep on speeding and running through red lights. Uh, their concern is um, these Big Brother devices are not just harming our privacy, they're harming our safety. Uh, this is clearly a case where government is doing something it shouldn't. Um, uh, Richard, uh, House Majority Leader Richard K. Army, a representative of Texas, has also protested the use of speed monitoring cameras on federal roads such as George Washington Memorial, Park, Memorial Parkway. A red light camera uses sensors to detect when a vehicle has run a red light and then takes a picture of it. The cameras are in use throughout the Washington region and have been embraced by law enforcement officials across the country. Police say the technology, which has been supported through federal grants, promotes safety at intersections, providing a strong and reliable deterrent. But they're eventually going to be used for something else. Maybe, no, maybe not. Leaks by report names UK privacy warning across Europe. European citizens are to be given an unprecedented warning about the threat of their, to their privacy from a highly controversial global eavesdropping network led by the British and US intelligence services. A leaked European Parliament document reveals that individuals and small businesses will be urged to encode all their electronic communications to protect their emails and faxes from interceptions after Euro MPs found overwhelming evidence the existence of the shadowy electronic spying system known as Echelon. And this is from The Guardian, May 26, 2001. U.S. to close Echelon spy station, Saturday, June 2nd, 2001. Nearly 12 years after the end of the Cold War, the U.S. Army is shutting down its third largest monitoring post in the world. <clears throat> the Bad Adling, Abling Station, that's A-I-B-L-I-N-G, in the Bavarian Alps, which for years has been alleged to be part of a U.S.-led Super secret global eavesdropping network dubbed Echelon is scheduled to close in September 2002, according to U.S. officials. German politicians and media reports for years after the, uh, the Cold War have accused the United States to, of using the station for industrial espionage. So it's all talking about the existence of Echelon, but they're going to be closing it and they'll never spy on you again. Right. June uh, 14th, 2001, Digital Angel set to fly tomorrow. Implant technology to be beta tested on humans. This is from the World Net Daily, uh, talking about uh, applied digital solutions being uh, Again, beta testing on humans and implant technology capable of allowing users to emit a homing beacon, have vitally bo uh, vital bodily functions monitored, and confirm identity when making e-commerce transactions. Ooh. Let's see what else is in here. Dog tag gets whole new meaning. California bill requires microchip for pets, permits for animal sales. This is from two, uh, April 11th, 2001 at the World Net Daily. Pet owners in California will soon be required to place a microchip in every dog and cat they sell, as well as obtain a permit from for each animal to be sold if a bill in the state legislature, legislature becomes law. Um, I talked to one friend who took a microchip out of their dog and it was dissolving. Um, I was told that it, uh, a lot of animals get cancer around that area. I don't know how true it is, but they said that the chip can um, cause cancer in the animal when it starts dissolving. 
ID in the blink of an eye. Um, McLean's eye ticket sees airport services opening up. Washington Post, um, Friday, March 9th, 2001. It can identify people by looking into the color of their eyes. <clears throat> Phones hasten to end cash. By James McIntosh in London, for, uh, Financial Times, June 27th, 2001. Europe, Europe's leading banks will move to a step closer to a cashless society on Thursday when they unveil plans to turn mobile telephones into credit cards. Beach may scan oceanfront faces, July 6, 2001, of uh, Hampton Roads News. Virginia Beach, new software that can analyze a face may transform the sometimes imprecise art of identifying criminals, comparing mug shots to people on the street into a science, police say. Yes, a very good thing they'll be able to look for criminals, and I'm sure it's been used many times to find uh, people who have stolen cars or robbed somebody or raped somebody or whatever, and eventually it's going to be used on it was to be used on everybody else, law-abiding citizens alike. Big Borders Books Shop is watching you. High-tech surveillance, the kind used to catch terrorists, will be spying on shoppers by Jennifer Johnston, the Sunday Herald. And this is from August 28th, 2001. It's supposed to be a sadic home of book lovers, coffee drinkers, and chattering classes, but Borders, the high, tech, the high street bookseller, has been attacked by human rights organizations for using high-tech surveillance equipment to spy on their customers. The company is to become the first retailer in the world to introduce a controversial security scheme normally used to trap football hooligans, pedophiles, and terrorists to photograph customers as they enter stores. Walmart does that. I notice it taking a picture when walking out the door. Smart Face, also known as Face It in the US, keeps a database of unique digital face maps that will check customers' pictures against those of known shoplifters. It's always for your own good. Beware laptop users told wireless networks a risk. Miami Herald, August 13th, 2001. Business travelers are eager to plug in their laptop computers into wireless internet networks, cropping up at hotels, airports, and coffee shops. Need to be on guard. Their email and web browsing can be easily intercepted. Security experts warn. It's another article on Big, bro big Borders. Uh, Workshop watching you. <clears throat> National ID card gaining support. This is out of the Washington Post um, by Robert O'Hara. Navy Petty Officer Wellington Jimenez walked into the identification room in Fort Hamilton in Brooklyn one day recently and gave his name, rank, and fingerprint. In return, he got a token of the future, a plastic ID card embedded with a microcomputer chip. The card with two photos, two barcodes, and a magnetic strip and the etched gold chip looks like a driver's license on steroids. More than 120,000 active duty military personnel, selected reserves, Defense Department civilians, and some contractors have received the cards in recent months. About four million are to be issued over the next two years. Euro banknotes to embed RFID chips by 2005. And this is financial, um, the EE Times um, from December 19th, 2001. 
Sacramento, San Mateo, California, the European Central Bank is working with technology with technology partners on a hush hush project to embed radio frequency identification tags into very fibers of the euro banknotes by 2005. E Times has learned and it intended to it's intended to foil counterfeiters. The project is developing a year as Europe prepares for a massive changeover uh, to the euro and would create an instant mass market for RFID chips which have long sought profitable application. This is from the Windsor Star. Smart chips could keep tabs on casino gamblers. RFID chips have evolved from uh, 650 US clunkers that had the antenna sticking out to ones with invisible microelectronics costing a dollar ninety uh, per still a dollar more than a conventional chip and it raises privacy concerns of course European security organization criticizes US surveillance law and this one is from Associated Press uh, January 23rd, 2003, the media watchdog in Europe's leading security organization criticized the United States on Thursday for snooping on the private lives of Americans with a law passed in response to the September 11th terrorist attack. In a reproach to the big brother-like tactics creeping up on post-September 11th America, uh, Freemuth Duve of the Organization for Security and Corporate Corp the cooperation in Europe condemned the FBI and the U.S. Immigration and Naturalization Service for monitoring library records and bookstore receipts under the USA Patriot Act. New driver's licenses pit privacy against security. Just for your security. They just want you to be secure and safe, so give up your, your uh, privacy so they can protect you. In the future, when you flash your driver's license to a police officer, be careful, someone else may be watching you. A new generation of driver's licenses that the federal government is developing with uh, the states would contain electronically stored information such as fingerprints and could allow authorities to easily track citizens. Nationwide supporters claim that with careful use, these new licenses could alert authorities to an attempt by a suspected terrorist on board an airliner, withdraw cash, or enter the country, all in demand precautions after September 11th. Once again, there is uh, an attack on the country becomes an attack on your freedoms. If they start scanning these things, they can track where I go, said Richard Smith, former chief technology officer for the Privacy Foundation and Advocacy Organization in Denver. If we do this, come, uh, come up with a national standard. There is no difference between a driver's license and a national ID card. It's all for your safety. Kidnap GPS to the rescue. This is from January 25th, 2002. Foreign executives and other individuals who are frequent kidnapping targets in Latin America will soon be able to use implantable ID chips and personal GPS devices in an attempt to thwart their abductors. This is from uh, Wired News. Here it goes. Post 9-11 fears usher in sub subdermal chips. Verichip recipients can be ID'd, monitored anywhere in the world. This is uh, WorldNet Daily. And it's from February 4th, 2002. It's a big long article and once again, <clears throat> under criticism by privacy advocates as well as Christians concerned over their biblically prophesied 
Mark of the Beast, the NASDAQ traded company, removed all references to human implantation from its website. This is Digital Angel. Its CEO claimed publicly that there were no plans to make the technology implantable, but rather for the user to wear the device outside his body, um, say like on a wristwatch. Then, can, then came September 11th, and the resulting urgent national drive to increase America's homeland security in this new climate of fear in which many Americans are susceptible to valuing safety over freedom, security over privacy, the company has found its golden opportunity to reintroduce the subdermal microchip implant it had previously deemed too hot for the American public to handle. Heads up, future cyborgs and planetable microchips are back in the news and the current focus on a tiny chip that can be injected into your body, then used to identify and monitor you. Very long article there. Politicians want to get chipped. Wired News. Uh, March 4th, 2002, Brazilian legislature wants to become the first politician to be implanted with a controversial microchip that would contain his personal information. They want their chips now. Wired News again. March 14th, 2002. Meet the Jacobs family, Jeffrey, Leslie, and their son, Derek. This, these people were in, uh, they showed uh, the news video of this in 9-11, uh, The Road to Tyranny uh, by Alex Jones. They're a fairly typical American family, middle class and ambitious. The father is a dentist, the mother is an account executive and at Interior Design Magazine, and the 14-year-old son plays jazz and tinkers with computers in his spare time. But one thing may soon make the Jacobs stand out. They could be the first family in the world to be implanted with microchips that contain their personal information. The chip in question, the Vera chip, is similar to the biochips that have been used to identify pets and livestock for years. Made by Applied Digital Solutions, the Verichip stores six lines of text and is slightly larger than a grain of rice. It emits a 125 kilohertz radio frequency signal that can be picked up by a special scanner up to four feet away. Three page article. On New body art chip implants making them cool. Oh, March 11th, 2002, a Canadian artist has implanted micro, uh, microchips in her hands in a quest to explore the relationship between identity and technology in an era when life is increasingly regulated by gadgets and machines. The creation of a biochip that can be implanted into people to transmit their personal information has been fantasy fodder for technophiles as well as being an Aurelian omen for others. Oh, this is March 14th, 2002. Uh, May 17th, 2002. Tokyo Smart Cards Challenge Cash. This is BBC News. Japanese commuters have embraced smart travel cards with two thirds abandoning their old passes in the last six months. Japan's largest train company, Japan Rail East, has just completed the Tokyo introduction for new smart cards to replace traditional commuter passes and has high hopes that one day the cards will re even replace the cash in your wallet. Oh boy. FBI plans to fight terror with high-tech arsenal. July 29th, 2002. Since September 11th, the FBI has budgeted tens of millions of dollars to turn its massive collection of computerized case files, memos, tips, and phone intercepts for an investigative black hole into mother load of predictive intelligence. If the effort succeeds by September 11th, 2004, it will have replaced today's system. 
so antiquated and cumbersome that many top FBI executives have never learned to use it with a high-tech brain that instantly calls years of records and eventually will simultaneously check data banks and other government agencies public records in the internet and it's just the beginning all in the name of your protection your security only halfway through this start taking so long they didn't intend for the video to be longer than 40 minutes and didn't intend for it to be longer than 20 minutes but here we are hopefully it uploads now I'll have to redo it again. March 10th, 2002. An ID, idea. Microchips under your skin. And this is from the Miami Herald. March 10th, 2002. Um, Nathan Isaacson of Tamarack is one of 2,500 people who want to get computer chips implanted in their bodies. The 83-year-old is in the early stages of Alzheimer's disease. If he wanders off or gets hurt, family members worry that medical workers won't know who he is and, they, and that he's allergic to penicillin or that he even recently implanted a, place, a pacemaker. The solution to such emergencies, says Palm Beach-based Applied Digital Solutions, is the Verichip. And, all, and it's... I understand. I understand why they'd want to do it, but still, it's going to start there, and then what? Smart ID card worries Hong Kong. This is September tenth. I'm sorry, March tenth, um, from two thousand two. Uh, in Hong Kong in 1949, Mao Zedong's communists conquered mainly in China and set off a massive flow of immigration to its city, then a comparatively um, prosperous British colony. Uh, to sort out newcomers from residents, Hong Kong introduced compulsory cardboard identity cards. Now Hong Kongers are about to be issued a new ID card. This time they're getting so-called smart cards with embedded computer chips that hold names, pictures, and birth dates, as well as a digital template of both thumbprints. A lot here, a lot more. I was just going to show the headlines, but I just wanted to read a little bit of each article so you'd understand. Um, Seattle.com, the latest way to pay is at your fingertips. Saturday, April 27th, 2002. <clears throat> Shoppers headed for the West Seattle Thriftway Wednesday can leave their credit cards, debit cards, and checks at home. They just need to make sure to bring their index fingers. The supermarket will be the first in Washington and one of the first in the nation to use a biometric system finger scanning to tie consumers to their credit cards, electronic benefit cards, and checking accounts says the maker of the system in DeVos of Oakland, Oakland, California. The main thing is it's fast, it's easy, and it's secure. Sure, it's secure. Here we go. The latest wave of security technology relies on facial patterns. Science fiction? No. Digital face recognition technology is no longer the stuff of James Bond's spy flicks or Orwellian novels. It is another terrorist trapping tool that is already becoming part of our post-September 11th high security reality. It's the wave of the future, said a technology and operations expert. Andrew Rudin, CEO of Eisner Information Solutions, the fact that 1984 is finally caught up with us and Big Brother is watching really doesn't upset me. The Face It Fit software was in use this Memorial Day weekend on ferries to the Statue of Liberty on Ellis Island after the federal government issued vague warnings of terrorist attacks on New York landmarks, including Lady Liberty. It's all for your security. This is from May 28, 2002. They log on, log on, log out with web crime cams. 
Citizens on Spy Patrol. This is the Cent Cincinnati Inquirer. <clears throat> In the new world of crime fighting, it's not Big Brother watching, it's your neighbors on their computers. Call it e-surveillance or citizens on cyber patrol, but with the new wireless crime cams cropping up around Cincinnati, more people are helping fight crimes with a click of the mouse. They log on watch and call 911 and all video is archived allowing police to come back later for evidence yeah that's nice it's understandable i get it june 17th 2003 little brothers big fingerprints all over the library the times online I uh, promised to be the high-tech savior of the embattled primary school librarian and genius device that guaranteed no more lost library cards or fewer missing books. All a child had to do to borrow Top C and Tim. The week was a flick. This week was a flick of the thumb through an unobtrusive fingerprint scanner so sensitive it could even recognize a pattern from under layers of sticky chocolate. High tech eye on a kid's fear of kidnappings prompts parents to try satellite tracking. But it's just there for all of us, not just your children, it's not just the safety of your children. Even before the most recent barrage of news stories about child kidnappings, Trina and Bob Dean fretted about the safety of their two preschool aged daughter. That is why the Metro Park couple ordered two $400 wristwatches that use a combination of satellite and cellular telephone technology to keep track of their daughters, even if this unspeakable happened. San Francisco Gate Chronicle, April 19th, 2002. All ice are on the Oceanfront's new surveillance system. That was September 10th, 2002. <clears throat> After eight weeks of installation and testing, the police department on Monday switched on its new facial recognition video camera system when it hopes which it hopes will aid officers in their never ending search for criminals. Secret Court please bid for more wiretap power. Associated Press. Washington Times. 9-11-2002 is when this is published. Belgium plans digital ID cards. BBC News, uh, October 4th, 2002. Decision in Brussels to create a controversial ID card could radically alter the way citizens interact with government. The card will have a digital certificate embedded on it, which will allow Belgian citizens to communicate online with the government. Well, tighter gun checks closer. October 16th, 2002. The House yesterday passed without dissent a bill authorizing $1.1 billion in federal funds to help states computerize criminal records so they can be used in background checks on gun buyers. That's understandable. Tracking devices found for dementia debated. Newcastle upon Tyne, England. This is UPI Science from Science and Technology. October 17th, 2002, although tagging dementia patients with tracking devices could help protect them from getting lost or hurt, a report released Thursday cautions there are serious ethical issues such as privacy and personal liberties that should be considered as well. Of course. Border to turn into a high-tech sentinel. Within a year, Michigan is to get powerful cameras, high-tech sensors to help agents keep watch. October 8th, 2002. In some other place, there would be nothing sinister about the man and woman ambling down this long country road on a misty Monday morning, but 80 feet above them, a powerful 
heat-sensitive camera with a 5-mile range has picked up their movements. The lens of camera 16 zooms in on the couple from the command center of a bunker 12 miles away. The U.S. government is watching them. Salt Lake Tribune. Government forms offer no guarantees of privacy. <clears throat> Washington, uh, this is from October 31st, 2002. Student aid applicants check the fine print. That information you put on your application to the U.S. Department of Education is being shared with the Pentagon, Justice Department, and other agencies, even private companies like debt collectors. A report was released Wednesday by congressional investigators found government agencies frequently share information gleaned from various federal applications, sometimes without the applicant's knowledge about where it might go, and it is legal. Streamline check-ins may be tested, LA Times. Streamline airport check-in for travelers who have passed the background check investigation. Could get a test as early as next year after a congressional agency determined the approach might improve security. The Trusted Traveler Program. Um, Registered travel program offers potential for improving security and reducing the uh, inconvenience to participating travelers, says the GAO report, copy of which obtained by the Times. Fearing that terrorists could infiltrate the program, the Transportation Security Administration had initially opposed special treatment for low risk passengers. However, the agency now reversed the course and set up a registered traveler program to study the concept and plan for possible implementation. The car to incorporate an, uh, a biometric identifier such as fingerprint or measurement from the eye or hand. A special machine would read the card and match it to the traveler. The FBI has bugged our public libraries. <coughs> CTNow.com, and this is from. November 3rd, 2002, some reports say the FBI is snooping in the libraries. Is that really happening? Yes. I have uncovered information that persuades me that the Federal Bureau of Investigation has bugged the computers at the Hartford Public Library, and it's probable that other libraries around the state have also been bugged. It's an effort by the FBI to obtain leads that it believes may lead them to terrorists. Administration begins to rewrite decades of, decades of old spying restrictions. Is that really you? Check my DNA. Wired News. December 6, 2002. Retinal scans, fingerprints, face scans. In the post 9 11 world. These kinds of biometric measures are increasingly used in public places like government offices, airports, and rental car kiosks. Every human cell contains DNA, the blueprint for all life, and that genetic code is unique to each individual. So unless you have an identical twin, there's little chance that someone could mistake your DNA for somebody else's if it were used as a form of identification. DNA is nature's digital signature, said Clay Shirky. At the a uh, professor in interactive telecommunications program in New York University recently posted an article on his website outlined how DNA could be used as a biometric. Uh, DNA used as a biometric has advantages uh, of being easily digitized because genetic information can be expressed as a formula that contains four letters similar to the computer code which is based on a binary system. Cameras mold for neighborhood watch. Yeah, that's kind of a good thing. Helps protect your neighborhood. Not all of it's bad. Orwell, here we come. January 6, 2002. Washington, the biggest problem with criticism of Adam J. Poindexter, John 
Poindexter's massive spy proposal is not in the argument or the spy system being so damn creepy. Of course it's creepy. The federal agency deliberately chose the motto, Knowledge is Power, crafted a logo uh, certain to inspire conspiracy theories, and is itching to assemble a detailed computerized dossier on every American. Fingerprinting kids, a smear on privacy. On Wednesday, January 8th, 2003, the Herald News, besides having an evacuation plan and lockdown strategy, school um, one has uh, another security measure, records of students' fingerprints. Since last September, resource officer M.R. Singer has been collecting prints, sending a copy home to parents, and filing a copy of the police station on Brown Avenue. The prints will be used if the student is ever abducted. I can understand that. We gotta protect your child. Retail takes stock of smart shelves. January 8th, 2003. Um, two major retailers and consumer products giants are teaming up to test a new smart shelf technology. Um, this is Gillette, Walmart, and the UK-based super supermarket chain Tesco plan to install specially designed shelves that can read radio frequency waves emitted by microchips embedded in millions of shavers and rel related products. The shelves can scan the contents of the shelves uh, and via computer alert store employees when supplies are running low and when it theft is detected. And delivering the post chip by chip. Postal services are under pressure worldwide. This rise of information technologies, national postal services are increasingly finding themselves having to adapt to new ways of providing service while at the same time balancing budgets. Over, now moreover, a growing number of private companies have entered the postal market ser marketplace offering similar services including regular uh, daily mail and parcel delivery. <clears throat> Barcodes stop baby mix-ups. Barcode your baby to stop the mix-ups. January uh, 22nd, 2003. As soon as babies are born, their fingerprints and those of their mothers are stored in electronic barcodes, which mother and baby wear on their wrists. The barcodes also contain other information, including the mother's details and information about the doctors present at the birth. In effect, they act as an ID card for the baby. If there's any doubt about a baby's identity, the barcodes can be scanned by a machine which matches the child with its mother. Very good for safety. Very good. You need it. You need to just implant the baby with a microchip. <clears throat> Place cameras to spot hot cars. You can process thousands of plates an hour. Toronto Star, January 3rd, 2003. Bushback's Big Brother database. <clears throat> White House offered details on how TTIC will evolve, but critics have of an uh, existing database data mining program under development by the U.S. government were quick to draw comparisons to the controversial. Total Information Awareness Project. Last week, citing privacy concerns, the U.S. Senate voted unanimously to set restrictions on that agency, which is run by Admiral Joint Pine, Poindexter at the U.S. Defense Department. It potentially, it's potentially a huge repository of information concerning American citizens. David Sowell, uh, General Counsel of Electronic Privacy Information Center said, there's nothing in what has been made publicly available that would contain a limitation on such collection. To what extent, if any, will this system collect and maintain information on U.S. citizens? 
Uh, Ottawa opens the door to an era of Big Brother expanded anti-terrorism measures too far vulnerable to abuse. February 1st, 2003. Big Brother takes on the streets of central London. February 4th, 2003. One of the biggest urban surveillance systems in the world goes live in central London this month, prompted by, not by fears of terrorism, but traffic that averages less than 10 miles per hour. Windsor Star, February 7th, 2003. ID card with ease border woes. Customs need, will need more than just a driver's license minister. So, mourns. One Star's technology helps police crack down on out of that. February 20th, 23, that's 2003. This is from Troy, Michigan. PR Newswire. Oracle joins FBI CIA da database plans. Amid the fear about war and security privacy, Vicket says the world's second biggest IT software company is raising some Orwellian concerns of its own. Oracle Corporation is working with the CIA and the FBI on plans to create a national database which will capture information on all Americans and quite possibly people in the rest of the world, February 24th, 2003. <clears throat> Almost there. Sorry, we're at an hour now. A biometric card under study for permanent residence. Test ordered on fingerprint reading devices, March 6th, 2003. The federal government is working on a pilot project that could see permanent residents fingerprinted and then information embedded in their permanent resident cards, Montreal Gazette has learned. TIA performance depend, defend domestic spying plan. Backers of the Pentagon's Total Information Awareness Project dismiss criticism of the plans as hysterical, vociferous cries from privacy advocates. Total Information Awareness Project has developed being developed by the U.S. Defense Department is an example of using the latest technology to guard against future terrorist attacks. Representatives of two co conservative groups said during a, a debate at the Computers Freedom and Privacy Conference, if fully implemented, TIA would link databases from sources such as credit card companies, medical insurers, and vehicle motor vehicle agencies uh, in hopes of identifying terrorist activities. And that's from March, or sorry, April 3rd, 2003. Count your remaining liberties at the next security checkpoint, April 10th, 2003. Sunspot, Maryland. Hmm. One last morning of uh, Maryland legislative uh, session this bunch of kids dripping white giddy with laughter ducked into out on the lead in morning rain and ran into the modern america a line that stopped at a security checkpoint in the state house basement and backed up all the way to the door uniformed officers went through pocketbooks and school bags the kids were teenagers some of them looked surprised to uh, be searched and some of them well, some of them looked surprised at the other kids' sense of surprise. You could divide the reaction by accent. The kids who didn't expect to, uh, the search were exchange students from a school near Hamburg, Germany. The kids accustomed to this routine American checkpoint were students at Severna, at Severna Park High in and Andro County. Visitors face scanner database uh, as they enter Pinellas Courthouse, April 30th, 2003. Big Brother in Britain's War on Terror.
May 1st, 2003, British recently revealed a highly sophisticated plan to uh, protect London from a terrorist attack. Using the latest surveillance technology and the scheme to reduce downtown traffic, authorities have designed a ring of steel around the city. But not everyone is pleased with the heightened security um, at a potential cost to privacy. Now 800 video surveillance cameras equipped with the latest infrared technology have been installed throughout central London. NewScientist.com GPS implant designs for humans tested. <clears throat> Prototype GPS tracking device designed to be implanted inside a person has been successfully tested, claims its manufacturer. However, technical experts are questioning whether the system could really work. Experts offer biometric tools against terrorism. Iris scanners, facial recognition gadgets, fingerprint readers, and other biometric gizmos are routine features in Hollywood thriller science fiction movie, uh, shows. And the federal government, if the federal government gets their way, it may eventually play important roles in guarding America's border. Objections to retinal scans. The retinal scanner fell out of favor because it was invasive and some people were squeamish about the light beams entering their eyes, said a leader of biometrics industry, former Princeton scientist Joseph Attic. Auto scans of fake, uh, Texans' faces, fingerprints rejected. If you pass this bill, Big Brother will be watching you, said Representative John Marby, a uh, Democrat of Waco. This is Big Brother watching out for your safety, Warren uh, Chisholm, uh, uh, Rep Representative Papa said. The bill would allow other automated methods of identifying a person based on physiological characteristics, including facial recognition, thumb printing, and fingerprinting. The high-tech identifiers could have helped cut down on foreigners and fraud, supporters said. Cameras put focus on civil liberties. Bob Brown is a true believer, perhaps a little paranoid for some minds, but nevertheless a believer. His faith rests in the scary idea that the surveillance of New Yorkers by public and private watchers is proceeding at a rallying pace. We're putting in place an infrastructure to track people that recalls the days of the Stasi, he said recently, now referring to East Germany's secret police during the Cold War. The word, the word landed jarly amid the light locks and cherry blossoms of Washington Square. Anyway, smart cams take aim at terrorists. The Department of Defense believes intelligent DIVAs can fight terrorism. DIVA is the part of um, Digital video arrays are collections of really smart cameras able to detect and identify an individual in a crowded train station and track him wherever he goes, out of the station, into the parking lot, into the freeway, and so on. <clears throat> More firms work uh, monitoring web surfing workers. Oh, this is from reporter George Knapp. What's the Joint Terror Terrorism Task Force doing in the tiny town of Rachel? This is June 26, 2003. FBI agents have confirmed that a search warrant has uh, served Thursday night on the home of self-described military watchdog Chuck Clark in the tiny town of Rachel near the mysterious Area 51 ma military database. Military base an action initiated by the Joint Terrorism Task Force. We believe the action was taken because Clark escorted the I-Team on a tour of the roads surrounding the base and showed us the location of military sensors hidden on public land.
PC World Privacy Watch tracked by the shirt on your back. Radio frequency technology has the potential to identify us all. One day, not long from now, virtually any store, restaurant, or business may be able to identify you, note that what clothing you're wearing, and possibly even detect how much money you have in your wallet as you enter the establishment. With little fanfare, the new technology that could come uh, could make this possible, called RFID, a radio frequency identification, is rolling out on a massive scale. RFID tags potentially could be placed in clothing, laptops, even currency. The chips that run RFID tags are barely detectable flakes of silicon, some no bigger than a grain of salt. <clears throat> Each tag uses radio frequencies to emit, a, transmit a code that uniquely identifies the tag. Big Brother to see all everywhere. Pentagon is developing an urban surveillance system that would use computers and thousands of cameras to track every track and record and analyze the movement of every vehicle in a foreign city, July 1st, 2003. Oh, so Mark, Walmart canceled the Smart Shelf trial, July 9th, uh, 2003. Walmart stores has unexpectedly canceled test Testing for an experimental wireless inventory control system, ending one of the first and most closely watched efforts to uh, bring controversial radio, radio frequency and application technology to stores in the United States. The shelf was never completely installed, uh, said sp Walmart spokesman Tom Williams. We didn't want it. any materials that were there in Brockton were removed. We have never, we never had products with chips in them. Hmm, good move. Big Brother gets a brain. January 9th to 15th, uh, 2003. The cameras are already in place. The, mo the computer code is being developed and a t dozen more major companies and universities, the trial runs uh, have already been planned. Everything is set for a new Pentagon program to become perhaps the federal government's widest reaching, most invasive mechanism yet to keep us under all under watch, not in the far off dystopian future. <clears throat> a new chip can be implanted in humans, Mexico City in uh, July 18th, 2003. U.S. passports to carry digitally signed images. U.S. citizens will be issued a smart passport carrying a digitally signed photograph by 2004. Tracking chip privacy uh, concerns privacy advocates for retailers questionable merit for customers. Your cereal box could talk or your batteries or your... Uh, where your batteries or your shoes could consumer good uh, you take from the store, take to your home, what would it mean for you and your privacy? Barcode. Radio transmitter tag basically talks to its manufacturer retailer telling it helpful information about product but possibly very personal information. Privacy chief to probe spy cams, old Strathcona surveillance question. <coughs> That's July 31st, 2003. Edmonton, the province's privacy watchdog, has ordered an investigation into the legality of police surveillance cameras in old Strathcona. If Alberta's information and privacy commissioner finds the cameras violate the provincial law, he may order the police to change their pro their procedures or remove the cameras. 
Who's watching the class? Webcam. Schools raise in schools raise privacy issue. <clears throat> Camera phone used as crime stopper. <clears throat> Putting in new technology to an anticipated use. A teenage boy in New Jersey used his camera cell phone to snap photos of a man who tried to lure him into his car, providing evidence that led to alleged assailant's arrest. It was reported Friday. Used for something good. ID uh, chips pressed to into laundered clothes. We already talked about that earlier. August 12, 2003. The ddnet.uk. Body part identifiers coming to travel documents. <clears throat> Public urge to avoid biometric trial. No cooperation, no ID cards, say privacy advocates. Privacy campaigners are urging people not to participate in the home office biometric passport trial due to take place this year. This is in uh, August 29th, 2003. Your cell phone is now a tracking device. A few days ago, Governor Doyle signed legislation to improve 911 service for a cell phone. According to Wisconsin Legislature Associated Press, the bill creates a new uh, surcharge. Cell phone or tracking device, how new tech will get you. Almost at the end here. Martin plans domestic security unit concept to be similar to U.S. Department of Homeland Security. Ottawa Citizen, November 16, 2003. Canada will develop a comprehensive national security policy to deal with the continuing threat of terrorism, says Prime Minister to be Paul Martin. FBI may collect juveniles' DNA. DNA profiles from hundreds of thousands of juvenile offenders and adults arrested but not convicted of crimes could be added to the FBI National DNA Crime Fighting Program under a proposed law moving through Congress. Big Brother is back. Picture of a globe under the watchful eye gaze of that spooky pyramid on the dollar bill. Uh, the one with the all seeing eye of God at the top, underlining the project's motto Scientis est, Scientia est Potentia, knowledge is power. All in all, it's not a bad description of the uh, office's lofty and controversial ambitions, quietly created after the September 11th attacks. It's always September 11th back then. If you're not paranoid, you ought to be. Man is conceived and sent. Uh, Homeland Security heats up plan. Federal officials consider uh, extending the U.S. government's plan. Oh, let's go ahead and say it. Spy on Americans. It's all about the Patriot Act. Uncle Sam and Big Brother, Pentagon's plan surveillance system goes much too far, privacy advocates say, and this is from 2002. And 
and almost at the end. This is an article from 1993 issue of Covert Action Quarterly. Private prisons are a sympt symptom of response by private capital to the opportunities created by society's temper tantrum approach to the problem of criminality. Prisons for Profit, Three Trends of Covered, Corrections Corporation of America, and Ultimate Security Systems at Your Fingertips. Windsor Star. Okay, that's it. I'm all done. I just want to recommend some documentaries for you. Uh, to get more detailed information on what's going on with the uh, high-tech surveillance. Uh, there's Police State 2000 by Alex Jones. There's also this one, Police State 2 Takeover. These are all VHS. This is what I started off with many years ago when I uh, first started getting into this. I was collecting VHS tapes, making copies of them, and then giving them to firefighters and that. Another must see is Police State 3, Total Enslavement. And The Matrix of Evil. And The Masters of Terror. And Terror Storm. And the last one is Endgame. Jones, Rox Jones chronicles the history of the global elites bloody rise to power and reveals how they have funded dictators and financial financed the bloodiest wars, creating order out of chaos to pave the way for the first true world empire. That's it. For this segment of I tried to tell you, I tried to tell you back then in the 2000s that all of this was coming. It's, uh hasn't really gotten much better, but <sighs> try to tell you. Thought I was crazy, now it's happening. Even more so. Thanks for watching. Good night.